Welcome to the Pelvic Organ Prolapse video course. My name is Maria Giroux, and I'm a fourth year medical student interested in obstetrics and gynecology. This is a three part video course designed for medical students and residents. This course is suited for all levels, and no previous knowledge about pelvic organ prolapse is required. So, what are we doing today? In the first video, we will talk about the origins of pelvic organ prolapse. We will look at the anatomy of the pelvic floor and the types of prolapse. In the second video, we will work through a case of a patient presenting with a sense of pelvic pressure or heaviness. In the third video, we will come up with a treatment plan and work through two follow-up appointments, including a pessary change and a patient requesting a surgical intervention. I hope that you enjoy the course. Let's get started. So why should you know about prolapse? It affects a lot of patients. Chances are that you will see prolapse at some point in your training or practice. 30 to 65% of women who present for a routine gynecological exam have a grade 2 prolapse. 2.9 to 5.7% of women experience symptoms of prolapse and 11% have a lifetime risk of undergoing surgery for prolapse or incontinence. What is pelvic organ prolapse? Great question! Prolapse is a herniation of one or more pelvic organs into the vagina or out of the vagina. Pelvic organs include bladder, uterus, vagina, and bowels. It occurs because of poor support of pelvic organs. Can you name the three structures that support pelvic organs? Pelvic floor muscles, also known as elevator ani muscles, pelvic floor connective tissue and ligaments, and vaginal wall. These three structures support the pelvic organs. Let's look at each structure individually. First, let's look at the levator and eye muscles. Can you name these muscles? Puberectalis. Puberectalis originates from the pubic bone and wraps around the rectum to the external anal sphincter. Pubococcygeus. Pubococcygeus originates from the pubic bone. It attaches to the vaginal walls, urethra, anus, perineal body, and inserts into the coccyx. It suspends the vaginal walls. Iliococcygeus. Iliococcygeus spans from the ilium to coccyx. Normally, the baseline contractility of levator and eye muscles elevates the pelvic floor, compresses vagina and urethra, and moves the rectum towards the pubic bone. When there is an increase in intra-abdominal pressure from coughing or laughing or sneezing or lifting heavy objects, the vagina becomes compressed against levator and eye muscles and lies nearly horizontal. This narrows the general hiatus and prevents prolapse. So how does prolapse occur when levator and eye muscles lose their tone? With increase in intra-abdominal pressure, Vagina drops from a horizontal to a semi-vertical position, genital hiatus widens and opens, and this allows for herniation of pelvic organs. Next, let's take a look at the pelvic floor connective tissue, vaginal walls, and ligaments. Connective tissue and ligaments support pelvic organs and attach them to muscles and bony structures. Connective tissue forms a fascia called arcus tendineus fascia that attaches anterior and posterior vaginal walls to levator anti-muscles. 
Can you name the ligament that attaches uterus to the sacrum? Uterosacral ligament. It supports the uterus, cervix, and upper vagina. It prevents vagina uterus from prolapsing. Postmenopausal women have estrogen deficiency, which results in decreased collagen synthesis. This weakens the connective tissues. When levator NA muscles lose their tone, connective tissue and ligaments need to do more work to support the pelvic organs. Over time, connective tissues stretch, resulting in prolapse. So what are the different types of prolapse? Cystocele is a prolapse of the bladder. Cystourethrocele is a prolapse of the bladder and urethra. Uterine prolapse is a prolapse of the uterus. A complete prolapse of the uterus is called prosodentia. Vaginal vault prolapse is the prolapse of the apex of vagina, which can occur after hysterectomy. Rectocele is the prolapse of the rectum. Enterocele is the prolapse of small bowel. And perineal descent is a prolapse of perineum. Now that we know the basics of pelvic organ prolapse, let's move on to the case.